If you've been watching us for a couple of months, you'll remember that we we're trying to get to 100,000 subscribers before the UK left the EU. That obviously happened, and we won that race pretty categorically. With the Brexit deadline delayed, let's go for round two. Can we get to 200,000 subs before the UK eventually leaves? You know what to do to lend us a hand. Subscribe to this channel and share it with your friends. If we do win, we have a pretty huge announcement, so watch this space. Welcome to yet another Brexit Explain video. In this one, I'm going to be talking about what happened last night. And a lot happened last night. Prime Minister Theresa May announced her resignation, and Parliament held a series of indicative votes. We'll be discussing the resignation in a separate video, and you can find that through a link in the description. So as I said, last night, Parliament held an indicative vote on what sort of Brexit outcome it wants. Because the Letwin Amendment passed on Tuesday, Parliament had control of the parliamentary timetable, and so it could schedule in time for this vote, which the government otherwise probably wouldn't have tabled. the right 329, the nose to the left 302. I know I've said this before, but to reiterate, this is constitutionally massive. The timetabling of Parliament is usually a right reserve for the government. Anyway, before the indicative voting even kicked off, Sir Oliver Letwin, the same Letwin who tabled the amendment on Tuesday, tabled a business motion. A business motion is a motion about the parliamentary schedule. It seeks to change the order or timing of events in the House of Commons. Specifically, this business motion gave Parliament control over the schedule for Monday as well as today. This is because Letwin and Parliament generally don't expect this vote to be conclusive, and there'll probably have to be another round if they want to get a clear outcome. The government whipped against this motion, trying to keep control of the parliamentary schedule. But they were defeated 331 votes to 287, with 33 Conservatives rebelling. This means that Parliament also has control of the parliamentary schedule for Monday, meaning that there'll probably be another round of indicative votes then. So how did the indicative votes work? Well basically MPs were given one long ballot paper, with all of the possible outcomes. They could tick as many boxes as they liked to indicate which outcomes were acceptable to them. Equally, they could vote against as many proposals as they like, or just choose to abstain. 16 different proposals, technically called amendments because they don't have their own motions, were put in front of the Speaker. The Speaker selected eight of these to be included on the ballot. In order, these were Amendment B, which proposed leaving without a deal on the 29th of March. This amendment was defeated with 400 votes against and 164. In respect of Mr Barron's motion B, the ayes were 160, the noes were 400. So the noes have it. Amendment D, known as Common Market 2.0, which proposes that the UK join the European Free Trade Association and the European Economic Area with a comprehensive customs arrangement. While Labour didn't whip for this amendment, they recommended that their MPs voted for it. However, this amendment was also defeated, with 188 votes in favour and 283 against. In respect of Mr Nicholas Bowles' motion D, the ayes were 188, the noes were 283. Yeah. So the noes have it. Amendment H which called for European Free Trade Association and European Economic Area membership without a customs union with the EU. This amendment was, you guessed it, defeated by 377 votes to 65. In respect of George Eustace's motion H, the ayes were 65, the noes were 377. So the noes have it. Amendment J, which calls for the UK to enter into a permanent customs union with the EU in any Brexit deal. This amendment was narrowly defeated by 272 votes to 264. In respect of Mr Kenneth Clark's motion J, customs union, the ayes were 264, the noes were 272. So the noes have it. Amendment K, which was tabled by Labour, and outlines their plans for a future relationship with the EU. It calls for a comprehensive customs union, close alignment with the single market, matching the new EU workers' rights and protections, and close participation with any future EU projects. 
It also calls for the UK to have some sort of say in future EU trade deals, despite technically being a third party. Again, this amendment was also defeated, with 237 votes to 307. In respect of the Leader of the Opposition's Motion K, the ayes were 237, the noes were 307, so the noes have it. Amendment L, which proposes that in the event of a no deal having been agreed, the Government would have to hold two days before the scheduled date of departure, asking the Parliament if they approved of no deal. If Parliament didn't approve of no deal, this amendment would require the government to revoke Article 50, effectively halting Brexit. This amendment was also defeated with 293 votes to 184. In respect of Joanna Cherry's motion L, the ayes were 184, the noes were 293, so the noes have it. Amendment N, known as the Second Referendum Amendment. This amendment states that no Brexit plans can be implemented unless and until they've been approved by the people of the UK in a confirmatory public ballot. It's worth noting that this isn't quite the same as the second referendum. Technically, the UK would just ask the people a simple yes-no question about whether or not they approve of the deal that Parliament comes up with. Labour have said that while this doesn't perfectly reflect their position, they will whip their MPs to vote for the amendment. This one, you guessed it, was also defeated with 268 votes for it and 295 against it. In respect of Dame Margaret Beckett's motion M, the ayes were 268, yes. the noes were 295. Yes. So the noes have it. And finally, Amendment O, which asks the government to seek preferential trade agreements if it comes to a no-deal Brexit, with a two-year standstill transition phase. This one was, drumroll, surprise surprise, also defeated, with 139 votes for and 422 against. In respect of Mr Marcus Fish's motion O, the ayes were 139, the noes were 422, so the noes have it. <laughs> Finishing my statement, I don't require any help from the government chief whip. The list's showing how honourable he'll learn, so you should listen, he'll learn. The list's showing how honourable and right honourable members voted will be published in the usual way on the Commons Vote app and website and in Hansard. So those are the results. Basically, nothing got a majority. And Parliament dislikes everything more than it likes anything. But it's not as bad as that might sound. Uh, point of order, Sir Oliver Letwin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, it's very, it's very disappointing. General, listen. Listen. It is, of course, a very great disappointment that the House has not chosen to find a majority for any proposition. However, those of us who put this proposal forward as a way of proceeding predicted that we would not this evening reach a majority. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and indeed, for that very reason, put forward a Business of the House motion designed to allow the House to reconsider these matters on Monday. No, no, no. And, no, no, no. no that's ridiculous. No, 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 no. And, ridiculous. No, perhaps colleagues would do the right honourable gentleman the courtesy. Yes, I say to the right honourable gentleman, the member for Derbyshire Dales, I'm not asking him, I'm telling him that the right honourable gentleman will be done the courtesy of being heard. That is the beginning and the end of the matter. Sir Oliver Letwin. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, Mr Speaker. And if, if on Monday the House is able to reach a majority view. No, no, I think no, that no. would be in the interests time. of our constituents. Yeah, 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 yeah. Waste of time. Ridiculous waste of time. Crazy. But I, Crazy. But I, but I personally continue to harbour the hope that my honourable and right honourable colleagues will see fit to vote in favour of a government motion between now and close the play on Friday. 
which would obviate the necessity for a further set of votes on Monday. It was unlikely that anything was going to get a majority in the first round of indicative votes. All of the options were on the table, so it's very tempting for MPs to only vote for their absolute favourite options and vote down everything else they don't like in order to give their favourite options the best chance of surviving to the next round. It looks like MPs sort of did this. Their voting was overwhelmingly negative, with MPs casting a total of 1,505 eyes or votes for approval, but they also cast way more no's, a whopping 2,649 to be exact. So you can see why it's not helpful to look at the votes in terms of defeats, given that with that many more no's than eyes, nothing was likely to succeed. It's more helpful to look at the most popular votes, the votes which got the most support from MPs. So here they are in order. At the top of the list you'll see the second referendum, a permanent customs union, and Labour's solution. This sheds a lot more light on what might be the final outcome of these indicative votes. It only looks like the top three in that list have any chance of gaining a majority in Parliament. But before we get into our predictions, let's look at the proposals that MPs most opposed. So in order of no's, here they are. At the top of the list, you'll find the Contingent Preferential Trade Agreements, No Deal, and EFTA and EEA without a customs union. These results basically rule out those top three proposals entirely, as they've already got a majority of MPs voting against them. It also makes Labour's plan a lot more difficult, given that it's only 19 MPs away from facing majority opposition. But this does give some hope to the remaining four proposals, especially the second referendum and permanent customs union, as it shows that there aren't a majority of MPs who absolutely hate those proposals, and so they have a chance of getting a majority if they can garner enough support. To sum up, nothing got a majority, the hard Brexit options were thoroughly rejected, and it looks like a customs union or second referendum are the two options that are most likely to garner a majority, if any of them do, that is. So what does this save Theresa May's deal? Well, she might be a bit buoyed by the fact that everything was defeated, and she'll probably use this as evidence that her deal is the only way through. These indicative votes might also force a few more hard Brexiteers to give up on their no-deal dreams, and vote for her deal instead. But we'll have to wait until Monday for the next round of indicative votes to really know. We'll also be releasing a video about May's deal's prospects in the coming days. So as the Brexit chaos continues, make sure you're subscribed, but as I mentioned at the start, we want to hit 200,000 subscribers before the UK leaves the EU, so subscribe to lend us a hand. Also, following us across our other social accounts gets you extra exclusive content as well as notifications when our videos and articles are posted.